Good morning, Mrs. Tessie Coson. It's nice to see you here at the World Economic Forum. Now, the theme for this year's East Asia Forum is about the ASEAN economic community. Some observers say that the ASEAN integration is delayed. Do you believe that to be true? It takes a long time to uh, go through all of the things that they wanted to implement. And right now, I think we're still in the awareness stage after the trade, uh, after the, uh, the trade barrier discussions. There's a lot of non-trade barriers that, it has to, that still have to be discussed. Mm -hmm. So I don't think this can, this can be done overnight. Now, what is the edge of the European Union compared to ASEAN in making the integration successful? We're all very different and we protect our sovereign borders. Yeah. So I think it will take a while uh, for us to get over the culture, get over the uh, uh, self-protections, I mean the sovereign protections. Yeah. And um, so I don't think it's going to be fast. But, whatever, but right now we just have to be, uh, we just have to make everybody more aware that this is ASEAN integrations. And no matter, even if we do not like it, it will come. Now, how do companies like SM, for example, how will it compete with its ASEAN counterparts? Uh, right now, it's more of an awareness that the ASEAN, uh, ASEAN uh, there, there is this ASEAN integrations, and you know we have to be, uh, we have to strengthen ourselves for competitions or join the competition. Okay. So it's just more of, it's really an integration which will come just like the digital disruption. Okay. But the thing is, it's not, it's not going to come very fast. It mm -hmm. will take quite a while before we, we would really be, we would really go into that integration uh, target that we want to do. Now you have been quoted as saying in the past that the Philippines' location is at a disadvantage compared to its neighbors. How could we level up? Uh, by being more active in forums like this so that we would be aware of what the other countries in, in the uh, ASEAN regions are, are discussing and, yeah. we, uh, and it would be good for us to have an active participation. Mm -hmm. I spoke with Trade Secretary Domingo and he said as it is that many products are zero tariff right now. Only a few are left. How do you think will this affect other Philippine products? Yes. Uh, there are already, the, the, the tariff uh, has already been lowered yeah. and I think the, uh, the trade among ourselves are already going up, uh, albeit slowly, yeah. but it's, it's already a positive trend. Now in terms of, there are a lot of non-trade non barriers that we still have to work on and that to ensure the free flow of goods and uh, the borders, I mean free flow of goods yeah. and uh, skilled worker yeah. and also capital. We have to harmonize a lot of the regulations so that it's easier to, uh, to have access, uh, easy access in the different ASEAN countries. Yeah. Now when it comes to ASEAN integration, the edge essentially of the Philippines is skilled labor. People speak good English. But then most countries want to keep the jobs for the locals. How does this affect us when integration happens? Yes, uh, that's why my my objective is to is to drive the awareness that we do have a lot of talents, and we would we would suggest that uh, uh, that the borders will be more open for our skilled workers to be uh, uh, to uh, that our skilled workers yeah. will have an easier access to those countries um, because if, if we have. Um, uh, more uh, migrations from one country to another, the ASEAN integrations can be faster. Okay. Now, SM has already built in China, although China is not part of ASEAN. Do you see any advantage to building anywhere in ASEAN with the integration? Will it be easier for companies like SM? Uh, not really. Uh, it's just in different, there are different countries in ASEAN and there are different uh, regulations, different uh, import uh, regulations, different, um, uh, you know, generally there's yeah. a lot of different in regulations which you will have to learn the regulations and the cultures of each country before yeah. you can really expand in uh, like the way we expand in the Philippines. What should we change in the Philippines in terms of doing business? 
I guess there it will be more of simplifying our regulations for other businesses to come in uh, in an easier, uh, I mean, more easily. But all of this will come eventually. And uh, but right now it's more of um, right now for the next two three years it's more of awareness that there's that ASEAN integration will come in anyway. Now, some say one of the challenges to ASEAN integration is monetary regulations or fiscal regulations per country. Will this matter that each country in the ASEAN region manages its finances differently? Yes, there's a lot of these uh, uh, financial standards that are different from, I mean, in, in, uh, uh, in these different countries. And it's not a matter of whether it's good or not. It's just that because of the different standards, it's hard for one, for, for one country to go to the different country fast. Now, what industries in the Philippines do you see most as benefiting from integration? Uh, anything that has to do with consumer spending. But don't we have too much malls? No. I think, uh, I think there's still a lot of untapped market. In the Philippines? In, even in the Philippines or in the other countries. Uh, there are, like in the Philippines beyond the NCR, there's still uh, some underpenetrated market. President Aquino was very popular when he took office, and yet observers say foreign direct investment was not as much as they had expected. What are the keys to successful FDI in the Philippines? Uh, foreign in, I think by collaborating with the local businesses in the Philippines uh, will make the FDI faster. Okay. What about processes? Uh, yeah, there's still some. That's still something that we, we or our government has to look into. Uh, and I, but we're. It's not exclusively. It's not exclusive to us as Philippines. Uh, it is present also in other countries. Okay. So you know, I think with the awareness, we will. All of us will gradually understand that there that we have to go toward the ASEAN integration. Now, one of the more interesting countries in the ASEAN is Myanmar. Myanmar has recently opened up. Is SM going to Myanmar? Uh, I've been to Myanmar, and I think there's a lot of opportunities in Myanmar. But I think, uh, you know, we still have a lot of opportunities also in the Philippines, so I'll stick to the Philippines. Okay. Now, Tessie, if we go into full integration, it can't be win-win. What is the potential danger for the Philippines? Uh, some countries in the regions are more developed than us, are more advanced than us, so the competitions could be keen. Like Singapore, for example. Yes. Thailand. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so if we are aware that this ASEAN uh, integrations will come anyway, so let's prepare ourselves and uh, strengthen our own, uh, uh, strengthen our own companies so that we can either join them uh, or I mean either beat them or join them. There's a lot of attention given to SMEs or small medium enterprises when it comes to ASEAN integration and yet the Philippines is not known for having a lot of SMEs or supporting SMEs. Uh, the the big corporations can nurture the, uh, the SME, but the SME, because of the digital uh, connectivity, eventually they will have access also to the other countries. And that will accelerate a lot of the integrations as well. Uh -huh. so is, is that a major issue for the Philippines in all honesty? Because no, no, it's not. Internet is very fast here. Yes, eventually. So I'm not saying that ASEAN integrations will happen that fast to, for us mm -hmm. in the Philippines, but eventually that will be the directions that Philippines will be going. Now, in the last East Asia Forum in Manila, the question was, do you believe that the Philippines can be the next Asian miracle? Do you believe that it's true? Well, there's a lot of attentions uh, uh, on the Philippines, but there are other countries also which is just as, uh, uh, which are receiving that much attention. So you have in Myanmar, they have Cambodia, they have Vietnam. Uh, we just have to work faster. Now moving on to you, you've been dubbed by Forbes magazine as one of Asia's most powerful women. What's that like? I don't know. <laughs> what is the secret? No stress. <laughs> but you work endless hours. 
you're known to be a workaholic. Yeah, but still, you know, it's just that uh, I, I sleep well, I don't have a lot of stress, and maybe we're just lucky. Now, it's typical for a Chinese family, culturally, to give the reins to a male heir. Now, you're the eldest, and you're sort of an aberration, given that you are female. Yeah, I'm the eldest, and also because you don't see my siblings who are, uh, who are hardworking. Uh, you only see me, because I'm just more... Uh, I'm, I'm usually present in many events. Uh, that's the only reasons why you think it was me, but there I have a lot of siblings uh, that are working very uh, in the different areas of the company, yeah. and they're the ones who are successful. I'm just, a, I'm just a spokesman. Thank you very much, Mrs. Coson, for your insights this morning.